Hi there, I thought we'd chat about some Himalayan balsam today and its uses in the kitchen. Um, it's an incredibly invasive species brought to here in 1839 from the Himalayas um, where the seeds themselves in the seed pods um, are used um, traditionally to make curries. Um, all of the plant is actually edible. Um, the flowers um, are incredibly beautiful orchid-like flowers and are edible, can be used um, to adorn salads and other dishes. Um, the seeds can be used in dry seed mixes in place of um, nuts and things like duckers and zatars and toasted sprinkled on salads used in baking. Um, the young immature seed pods can be eaten whole and they're very crunchy they've got a nutty flavor and they can be used in things like stir fries and i also think that they'd be really good pickled because of their crunchy texture the young shoots in spring and the leaves are also edible um, but they do contain quite a lot of um, calcium oxalate which is bad for your kidneys um, it is dispersed with cooking and um, so that's a good um, survival tip <laughs> um, the, the stems um, are hollow and if you cut between the bracts they can be used as biodegradable straws Himalayan balsam is so invasive that groups of volunteers working across the UK to attempt to eradicate it from our waterways and woodlands um, the popping pods um, which produce the seeds on Himalayan balm are so effective at propagating that they can land up to two meters away from the plant um, and for this reason it's actually illegal to propagate it yourself um, or try to grow it in your garden although it would take over so I'm not sure why you would do that. <laughs> it's worth bearing in mind um, when you're collecting Himalayan balsam that pesticides could have been sprayed in that area particularly if you're picking in parkland areas um, they'll kind of spray around the edges of grass um, and another thing to bear in mind is pollutants so Himalayan balsam grows along waterways um, and, and wetland areas if there's any um, major pollutants in those waterways that could affect the plant itself one use of the flowers which I thought would be nice to try today is to um, infuse a bottle of gin for 24 hours um, to get the most of this pink colouring. I also thought that we could have a go at trying out a dry seed based dip using Himalayan balsam seeds. Um, something similar to ducca. Um, we'll have a little experiment with that in the kitchen. It's difficult to collect the flowers without accidentally popping the seed pods which are ripe. Um, so one way of collecting the seed pods is we put a bag over the head. <laughs> I'll give it a good shake, hopefully we're going to get something in there. And then we look inside this bag you can see that they've separated out and we've got some of the darker, more ripe seeds in there. There's one. Hi, I've put some Himalayan balsam flowers um, into a one litre kilner jar. I've covered them with gin. I'm making sure that they are fully submerged and I'll add a little bit of lemon rind to that. I'll leave it to infuse for 24 hours and hopefully after that we'll have a lovely pink colour. So our gin has infused for 24 hours and it's really pink. So what we need to do now is strain out the flowers um, from the gin. So now we need um, to slightly sweeten it. Um, you can just use sugar and you just stir to dissolve the sugar 
Um, you can do this to taste. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of my dandelion honey, which is another recipe you could find on my Instagram. Stirring that in. There we go. And I've got a nice clean swing top bottle. I'm just going to pour. Ooh, don't want to lose any. <laughs> of the gin Whoop. into the bottle. Just a quick reminder while I'm pouring here, just to always be a hundred percent sure of the identification of any plant that you're foraging. Um, Himalayan balsam doesn't have any lookalikes luckily so it's a pretty easy one to identify but do be a hundred percent sure of the identification of any plant that you're hoping to use in the kitchen right so here we have our bottle of himalayan balsam gin and if we get ourselves a glass i've put some Himalayan balsam flowers, which are edible, in these lovely little heart-shaped ice cubes. We'll pop some of those in our glass. So we've got Himalayan balsam ice cubes. And we'll pour on some of our gin. There we have it. And now for the tonic. And this makes it even more pink. Yay! And of course, we're going to have to finish off by drinking it with our Himalayan, Himalayan balsam straw. Here's some of our biodegradable straws that we cut between the backs of the Himalayan balsam plant. Cheers! Mm. So we're going to use the seeds that we collected yesterday um, to incorporate them into a ducker blend which is a mix of nut seeds, spices and fresh herbs. Um, it originates from the Middle East and Egypt and it's very versatile. So we'll start by lightly toasting two tablespoons of the Himalayan balsam seeds. I've toasted the Himalayan balsam seeds and now I'm going to add four tablespoons of hazelnuts and um, I've chosen hazelnuts you could use pistachios and almonds and um, but and um, hazels are a nice option as they can be grown in your garden can be foraged um, so I thought it was a nice addition to our Himalayan balsam seeds I'm just going to toast those until the skin begins to blister and pop and that will give them a nice roasted flavour our hazels have been toasting for about four minutes and um, they are blistered and the skin's cracked so I'm just tipping them into a clean tea towel and giving them a, a quick rub in there and what that does is it takes off a lot of the skin so you don't get a lot of nut skins in your ducker. I'm just toasting the remainder of the dry ingredients to the ducka. We have four teaspoons of coriander seeds, two teaspoons of cumin seeds, and two tablespoons of sesame seeds. I've got one and a half tablespoons of white sesame and half a tablespoon of black sesame, um, just for interest. There's a wonderful fragrance coming from the whole spices now. Um, so and, and just the tiniest bit of smoke rising so that means that they're um, ready. I'm just going to tip those into a pestle and mortar. You could of course use a spice grinder 
and I'm just going to crush them um, until it's a kind of rough consistency. It smells fantastic in the kitchen. I'm just finishing up, crushing up these seeds and spices, and then I'll add the hazels to the pestle and mortar. They've got a lovely toasted colour to them now as well. Pop them in. I'm just going to crack them up um, so it's a good sprinkling consistency. And make sure you add salt to taste. Um, I'm adding about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And that's all a lovely consistency now for our decor. I'm just going to tip in the final ingredients, which is the toasted Himalayan balsam seed and give that a stir and it's ready you can keep this in a jar for uh, over two months um, really and you can use it to sprinkle on salads and soups or you can just dip nice bread into oil and then into this it would be lovely sprinkled on labna um, yogurt cheese and then scooped up with some really tasty bread um, I've made just here, for example, lunch is a simple salad of roasted garlic and smoked paprika squash with some leaves. Just going to spoon over some yogurt. This is a kaffir yogurt. And sprinkle on some of our lovely Himalayan balsam ducker. For more seasonal recipes, tips on cooking with weeds, foraging, follow me on my Instagram. It's Pia Castleton. Um, yeah, happy cooking. <laughs>